Hi everyone, Ms. Silla here, Learn to Grow. I hope that you're having a great day. So today I'm going to go over seven perennial crops that we grow. Now, these kind of plants return every year and usually live for two years or longer. So what's great about growing perennial crops is that they will regenerate and produce for many years to come. Just make sure to select varieties that are hardy to your climate for a good chance of survival. All right, let's take a walk in the garden and I'll show you what's growing. The first one is tree collards, and we are currently growing two varieties. This one is called Merit, and the taller ones are called Purple Tree Collards. And I've actually featured them in a video before, so I will link that video in the description box. These are known to be hardy to 20 degrees Fahrenheit and can live up to 20 years. The Purple Tree Collards can grow up to 10 feet tall, sometimes even taller, depending on growing conditions. The second one is perennial kale, and I'll show you two of the varieties that we are growing. This one here is called cosmic. The leaves are very pretty. So you can see the edges of the leaves are cream or yellow. These ones get to about three feet tall and about two to three feet around. So we have a row right here. And the other ones are in that garden bed, so we'll head over that way. These ones are called kaleidoscopic kale grags. They are hybrids from several brassica or cabbage plants. So they all look different. Some of them have purple veining. Some have curlier leaves than others. These ones have flat leaves. And this one kind of looks like lacinata or dinosaur kale leaves the texture of it at least, except the leaves are not as narrow as the Los Nato kale. Just like other kale plants, these perennial varieties are hardy to around 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. The third one is sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes, which is in the sunflower family. The plants can get to about 10 feet tall or even taller. When I planted them in the ground, they grew to about 13, some even 14 feet tall. So what we plant this for is for the edible tubers. So let's go ahead and take a peek and I'll show you how they look like. Well, it's a good idea to wear gloves when you're handling the main stalk. I just don't have it with me, but let's take a look to see what we get. There they are. Sunchokes are very prolific plants. So this is all from one plant. So we'll have to do a harvest video. The tubers are knobby and depending on variety, some of them come in cream like this one, pinkish, reddish, purple hues. And I think they taste like water chestnuts. Some people say similar to radish. They're really delicious roasted. Now sunchokes contain inulin, which is an indigestible fiber. So make sure to eat just a little bit or in moderation to avoid stomach cramps and bloating. Sunchokes can be grown in USDA zones three to eight and require that chilling period or vernalization in order for them to produce those tubers. Now they are also invasive in nature, so it's a good idea to contain them in their own raised bed or even in these grow bags. These grow bags are 40 gallons and I have about, I think three to four plants in each bag. A couple more things about sunchokes is it's best to harvest them as you need them. So I harvested them all at once and they started to turn soft. When you leave them in the ground, they will stay crisp and firm. And also as the weather gets colder, they will start to produce more sugars or convert the starches into sugars, which makes them sweet. And also, if you want to allow them to proliferate and come back, you can leave a tuber or two in a pot or in a raised bed and they will regenerate and come back in the springtime. The fourth crop is Egyptian walking onions, tree onions, or top setting onions. These have died back, but what we normally do is harvest the leafy greens like it would with any scallions or green onions. And here are some starting to emerge from the bulbs. Now, the bulbs are also edible. The ones that grow in the ground, as well as the top sets or the bulb blets. And I'll show you a picture of that. 
I'm going to pull this up so you can see how the bulbs look like. Now, I usually try not to harvest the bulbs because that's the mother plant. And if you leave them, they will keep producing every year. So they are similar to shallots. And they actually taste similar to shallots too. I think they're really good. I'm going to bury those back up. Tree onions are hardy to zones three to nine and are cold hardy all the way down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And they do best in full sun. There's another bulb that's starting to sprout. And it's a good idea to keep them in their own raised bed or in containers because they will spread and they are very productive. The fifth one is red vein sorrel and hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The leaves are tasty and have a citrusy flavor. Sorrel contains a significant amount of oxalic acid, so it is advised to only eat in moderation, otherwise it can cause digestive issues. The sixth one is Oca or Oxalis tuberosa, and the whole plant is edible. The leaves, the stems, as well as the tubers. The leaves have a citrusy flavor and they do contain oxalic acid, so it's advised to eat in small amounts or in moderation. Oka is hardy to around 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, so it can be grown as a perennial in mild and warm climates. The tubers can be protected with mulch from frost. The tubers are generally small. They grow to about four inches in length and they have a lemony taste as well as the stems and the leaves. The tubers can be prepared like you would with any root crops such as potatoes or they can be eaten raw. The last one is Scarlet Runner Bean. It is hardy to mild climates, zone seven and above. So what you wanna check for is the tubers. So if yours develop tubers, those tubers will regenerate next spring. Oh look, there are some root nodules. So that means that the rhizobia bacteria is present in the soil. These bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into a usable form that plants can use. Here is another one that's slightly bigger than the one I just showed you. So I usually leave this in the ground and if you live in a cold climate, you can dig them up and place them in a frost-free area. Then plant them out in the springtime. I hope that this video will inspire you to grow more perennial crops and make sure to grow ones that you like to eat. Thanks for joining me today everyone. Have a great day and happy gardening.